Welcome back. I didn't get through all my Leech S Rapid games in the last video in which I analyzed them, so I have a bunch of learning opportunities ahead of me, and I'm just going to switch over there now and look at my game. I think this was from three nights ago, maybe four. In this game, I did lose. As you can see in the graph, I just got further and further behind here, but it looks the, like the point at which I went behind was right here. Now, uh, one of you, I believe it was ZC Han, helpfully provided a keyboard shortcut here, the Z key, which makes all that engine analysis go away. So I don't see the engine lines up there, and I don't see here in the move list which move I should have played. That helped me a lot in my last video, although I had to keep remembering to press the Z key, and then I have to press it back again to find out where my next mistake was. Because try as I might, if I just go through the moves, I can never figure out where my mistakes are. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. That's one reason to have subscribers. It's one reason to have you guys here. However, while I was editing that last video, I saw that it still shows down here what I should have played here in the lower right of the move list. And now that I know that, I'm, I'm going to keep looking over there anyway. So anyway, that did come out really handy. But as far as I can tell, there is no way on Lee Chess to have the eval bar present so I'll know when I made a mistake, but not have it show what I should have played. Because what I like to do is find out where I made a mistake, go back one, and see if I can guess what I should have played. But right here, I, I haven't looked over there yet, so I'm going to try to figure out what I should have played. It is my turn. Should I have taken the pawn? I don't know. You know, because it says it right there on the screen, if your screen is big enough. Should I have put my knight here on f4, attacking their bishop? No, because they have two pieces aimed at this. Should I have taken that pawn with my knight? Should I have threatened their queen? I don't think I should have threatened their queen. They probably just would have pressed a pawn forward. Should I have threatened this knight? Let's see, if I had put my pawn here, where would they have put that knight? Back there? And then I could have taken this pawn? What did I do? Oh, I did take the pawn. Okay. All right, I'm going to guess it was a5. Let's see what it should have been. Oh, it, it showed a5 for a second, but then it switched and it said I, sh I should have taken that with my knight. Okay, well, what was the problem with taking here with the pawn? It's because they can take here? They could have taken there anyway. Even if I had taken this with my knight, they can still take here. It's just not their best move now. All right, why wouldn't they take there? If they had taken there after I took with my knight, what's the big problem? The big problem is that I can pin their bishop to their queen. Okay, well, maybe I should have played that then, and maybe my opponent still would have taken here, and they wouldn't have noticed this. But I obviously didn't notice it either, so... Okay, so I took that with my pawn, and that's a big problem because now they can take here, and I can't pin the bishop to the queen because my knight's still in the way. All right, I think I understand that one. That didn't put me really far behind, though I didn't go far enough behind until, let's see, over here I was still behind. It was less than minus one at this point. Okay, it was minus 0 0.8. So it wasn't even a mistake. It was an inaccuracy here when I played rook to e1. What should I have played? Should I have played rook to f1? No. Rook to e1 was my second best move. Well, uh, as, I, as we noticed in my last video, I never know when to play rook to e1 or rook to e8. No matter where my rooks are, I always put them in the wrong place. But I, sh I should have played queen to b1, aiming at that pawn. The reason I, I left my queen here, because it's defending that pawn. Uh, but I played this, if they take, then I take, then they get that pawn anyway. Is that what happened? No, they didn't take that pawn. Okay, I, I played here and they took it, and I took. But then I thought they were going to take here, but it's not their best move. Because if they took there, I was going to checkmate them. Okay, they had to play one of their G or H pawns. They did. And then I went over here to continue defending this pawn and aim at that one. But for some reason, I'm way behind. And it's because they can go here. I was pretty sure I wasn't supposed to trade. So I went down here to continue defending both pawns. But that was inaccurate. I should have instead played queen to E1. Where I wouldn't be defending that pawn. Well, that pawn's not in danger. But, but why is this so bad? Why was it so bad to defend both pawns? Because they can play b6, and then I would have taken it, and then they would have taken, and they would have had an outside passed pawn. Couldn't they have done that anyway? If I had played the best move here, queen to e1, now why is it not their best move to play here? Because again, I would take it, and they would take, and they would have an outside passed pawn. But now I can check, and they would get out of check, and I would get this pawn, but I would still be behind. So that's why I don't understand why my best move was better than my than my not quite as good move that I did make, which was this. Because I'm behind either way, and either way they can play this and still win. So I did understand this mistake here. I understand that I wanted my knight out of the way because if they do take the e-pawn, I will pin the bishop to the queen. But they won't take the e-pawn because, let's say my opponent recognized that that would happen, they would play rook a to b8. What? Why would they play that? Or f to b8. No, sorry, nobody's coming after the b-pawn. What's going on? Okay, well, I, I guess I understand why this is better, but 
but if they don't take this pawn, then it doesn't really matter. It only matters that, that I didn't do that and they did take the pawn. Okay. But I, def I definitely don't understand the actual mistakes that lost me the game. This one kept us pretty close to even here. Okay. Next game. Well, I don't know if I'll learn anything from this one, but I'll try. I'm really proud of this game. According to the game review down here at the bottom, I didn't have any mistakes or blunders. I just had one inaccuracy. And I was well ahead by the time I had that inaccuracy. The problem for my opponent, if they try to learn something from this game, they didn't make a mistake until they were already behind quite a bit. So they just played less and less optimal moves, slightly less than optimal moves until they were behind minus three. So I do feel kind of bad for them. Uh, we played a Karo Khan defense and my opponent didn't play it perfectly here. What they almost always do is take this knight. That is what the thing in the lower right hand says that they should have done. Sorry, did I say knight? They should take this pawn. And usually I get the bishop out here. They drop the knight back there. Then I drop the bishop back here. Then they get the other knight out and we play chess. But because they defended with that pawn and I took, from then on I had an advantage the entire time. I'm, I'm already at minus 1.3 here on move six. And I think that's just because they weren't familiar with the Karo Khan defense um, right here when I took this. I, I don't know if they thought it was a bad idea to take, like it would be a trap or something. Or maybe they didn't want to end up with that knight over here on G3. I, I don't know why they played a F3. But anyway, after that, um, I was ahead the whole time. And so apparently I was playing pretty close to the, the correct moves. And I was able to drive that bishop back a little bit and threaten the knight. And, the, you know, that knight is poorly placed. As you can see, they, they can't move that, that knight anywhere, the one that's on a4, so that was pretty fun. They, I let them take that. Now they can move that knight, but I was able to check and then take there and then get the bishop. So now, you know, I'm, I'm up eight points of material here on move 23. And so I have a whole extra piece. I'm only up five points of material now. But it wasn't, you know, terribly difficult to, to take care of this game. And again, I, I think it's just because my opponent made slightly less than optimal moves for those, you know, first 16 moves or so. But by the time their first mistake happened, that was my only inaccuracy. I, I thought they were going to try to do something in here, but I wasn't sure. Well, not there because, you know, the pin. But, but D5 was their only mistake in this game. According to the game review, they should have played queen to E3 here to get it out of the pin. Or queen to D3 to get it out of the pin. Or queen to C4 to get it out of the pin. But even if they had played their best move, I was already up minus two. I didn't know that, obviously, but but yeah, I, I was pretty surprised and impressed that at the end of this game it said I hadn't had any mistakes. So no, I, I don't think there's anything I can learn from this one. I'm going to go on to the next one. All right, in this one, my opponent was ahead for almost the entire game. It said I had seven inaccuracies, one mistake, and four blunders. It looks like, sorry, why why does it say four, but then there are six dots that popped up? Yeah, I don't know. Just, I, I don't know what just happened. When I hovered over the four blunders, there are six dots. That's six, right? I know I'm getting old and I'm losing my memory, but I think I can still count to six. So I don't know if so. Those last two look like I was already really lost at that point. And the two before that, the two in the middle game, I was already way behind. My goodness. Yeah, I don't even know where to look in this one. I guess I'll go right here in the middle of the graph where I had a very, the last time I had anything close to being even. And what I did play was king to h8. Why did I play that? I don't know. I think I didn't know what else to do. I also thought maybe all my pieces are, are optimally placed. And so I could just put my king over here, shuffle my king. I didn't know what else to do. Should I have just taken this pawn? I didn't want to start, you know, getting paths opened for them. I also thought if I left it there, you know, I, I'm fine. And I thought if they pushed this pawn and I locked it up, I have two knights and they have two bishops, so I thought I might have a very slight advantage. What should I have done here? I should have I should have taken it. Oh, okay. And they would have taken back, I assume so. Then I would have tried to bring this knight around this way, maybe. But I don't have an advantage. The graph said I had a very slight advantage here. Minus 0 0.2. But it's actually, so I didn't have an advantage here. The only other move that would have kept us close is bishop to c8. And then they would have taken, and I would have taken, like I said. But then they would have taken with their knight, and I would have taken with the pawn, and, and I would have had a queen and a rook still defending that, so I'm not sure what the problem was. Okay, so now I don't understand that. Moving my king over kept us barely underneath plus one. It wasn't even their best move, but they took there. Oh, and I should have taken with the knight first. Well, I thought I should take with the pawn first, but, it, but I didn't. And then they moved this rook over for some reason. Okay, we're still underneath plus one. I brought this bishop back. Now we're over plus one. Okay, so it's that bishop move that put us over plus one. I should have played knight d to f8 or knight h to f6. 
Oh, I definitely would not have played Knight D to F8 because that would have taken away one of the defenders on this pawn. Right now I have two two major pieces defending that pawn. And if I played this, that would have taken one of the minor, the only minor piece off of there and then they could have taken. It, of course, says that they would not have, so I probably should have played Knight H to F6. I don't know why. But yeah, bringing this down put us over plus one. They dropped that back. Here I should have gone ahead and put it on C8 to keep us at plus one. Or put my king back on g8. But instead, I went to defend this pawn, and now we're even worse. They put this knight over here. I should have played knight d to f8 again. Oh, because they were coming in here? Okay, I understand that. Uh, I was also pretty worried about them pushing this d pawn, which is why I blocked it. But now we're over plus two. Okay, so I lost this game without mistakes. My mistakes and blunders did not put me behind. It was inaccuracies that put us behind but the thing that put us over plus one wasn't even an inaccuracy it was just a move okay that doesn't help me at all but if one of you knows how it might help me you can explain something that's what the comments are for i appreciate it and one final game to go through i think i still have time for it this was last night's game i did win this one but it says i have two blunders according to the graph it looks like one is important it took me from being ahead plus two down to even so let's look at that spot i'll see if i can figure out what i should have played i don't even remember what i did play i probably took this pawn yeah i see captures d5 so should i have pushed forward I think I considered playing f3 here to get rid of their lead pawn, but but if they didn't take me and waited for me to take them, then they would just capture here, and then they would still have a lead pawn. So I considered that. I considered pushing forward. Um, it seems like I considered putting this knight out here, trying to bring it in to c5, but then they just would have taken, and I would have taken, and then, you know, their rooks pointed at my queen. Oh, maybe I should have just put my queen up here. Let's see. Knight to f4. That's the only move that keeps me above plus two. It says they would have just brought their queen up one, and then I would have played knight to b5, and they would have taken it, and I would have been fine with that. All right, well, I don't know why I would ever think of playing that there other than, oh, because of this, because it would be a check, but then they would just move over, and I would have lost a knight for two pawns. I have no idea. Okay. But I didn't play that. We went back to even. We stayed at even for a few more moves, and then right here, oh, I did play knight to... I did play knight to f4 eventually. I mean, I was going for the bishop because I wanted to, you know, to do that. Well, they moved, they ran away with the bishop. Oh, that was the blunder. Okay. Well, I pushed this forward because, again, their, their queen and king are lined up. Uh, they pushed past. Oh, that was... See, I thought that was a good move because then I was... Then I thought, now what can I do? Because now, now my rook being here does nothing. Oh, it says I should have played bishop to h... That's not bishop to h3. Bishop to h3 is over here. Aiming for this pawn. What? And it says they wouldn't defend it. Why, why, why in the world wouldn't they defend it? Okay, so I go here attacking this undefended pawn and my opponent is going to be like, I should let him have that. And they're going to get this out of the way so that when I take the pawn, it's check. It's their best move to get that knight out of the way. Why is it not their best move to defend? Because I get their rook that, and, and they're eventually going to get my bishop, right? Maybe not. Maybe I just get the rook for free and then bring the bishop back. So they're just going to play here and I'm going to take that pawn with check. And they're not going to put the knight back, because that would be worse than just moving the king over, which they should have done anyway, so the king and queen weren't lined up there. And then I've got to play queen to c2. Or bishop, oh, I could just take this, throw away my bishop for that knight. That's my best move. Queen to c2 is now second best. Or queen to e2. Okay. Well, the reason that I played a3 is because I wanted to play b4, and, and we could trade off here because their king and queen were still lined up. I guess my opponent had been looking at the engine and thought I had moved my bishop over here. No, I'm just kidding. They clearly didn't look at the engine, but they might have a turn ago and thought I was going to put my bishop here, and they saw that their next move was to get out of the way of me capturing that pawn. Oh, that that's still my best move. Okay, well, I didn't know that, so I just took the knight, and then I pressed here because that, that pawn's, you know, in trouble. But then my opponent went there, which allowed me to take here, and they took with the bishop and resigned. Interestingly, they took with the bishop in zero seconds. So I'm guessing that that they thought I was going to take with the rook, and they had pre-moved this. So they resigned because I was just about to take their bishop. Oh, that's pretty frustrating. I think that's a second video in a row where I maybe learned one thing, learned from one of all the mistakes and blunders in this. But I am caught up on my Leeches Rapid games. And my rating is higher than it's been in months. So I must be doing something right. Once again, thank you for spending your time here. If you know the answers to any of those, you know, things that I didn't understand, please feel free to leave a comment. And as always, I'll see you next time.